as well. So, Ms. Robertson. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, I'm going to I'm going to remind you that you were you were still under oath in this matter. Uh, we're about to break uh, for a 30 minute lunch, but uh, I wanted to update on uh, where the children are um, and kind of the status of their uh, respective placements. So, so where where is AP right now? She is located in a temporary foster home in Houston area. Okay, and how long has she been there, and when is that um, temporary up? I would have to look through and see exactly when that's up, but it's it's typically a three month stay. She's been there about a month, and um, but we can do a extension if if we need to. Um, is what I was told by the placement agency. And then the other two are currently located in. Um, well, let me let me finish. Let me finish with AP. So is is she has she been during this past month? Has she been enrolled in school? She has. She's enrolled in school. She's doing all right. Um, OK. And how many visits uh, has she had with her parents uh, during that month time? Well, let's see. We've had there have been some phone conversations and we just had our first in-person visit um, date again. I'd have to look back at my date, but we did just have an in-person visit at Tokyo's. OK, did, did you uh, did you supervise, observe that visit? I didn't. I wasn't able to see the whole visit, but I was there for some and it was wonderful. OK, and. Um, since since we were last in court, um, have you been to the parents home? I have. You have. And when did you when did you go to their home? dates i would have to look um at my phone for the dates. well i mean was it was it last week it was week before last i believe i sent the pictures to everyone it was actually we were i went the day before we came back to court the last time okay so let me let me ask uh mr mccatherine the pictures that were admitted were those pictures that ms robertson took when she was there as a matter of fact those were my client's photographs but she proved them up as uh Part of her testimony that's the condition of the what she saw when she was there. okay 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 um all right so do do we know if there is um uh, if they uh, have gotten any other beds uh, at, at all so i have not been to the home since that visit i know that i did observe egg crates and a twin size mattress being um, carted over to the house because they were just moving in, um, but I have not observed. Okay. I, I missed. I missed the first part. I, it, it sounded to me like uh, carts or crates or something. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, I, I did observe um, egg crate mattresses. I guess is okay. what they're called. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Sir. That's okay. Egg crate. Yes. Okay. I got you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, and was it your understanding? Uh, that, that those were for the children or for the parents, or, or you just don't know? You're not sure? I do not know. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, any, uh, so, so tell me uh, quickly ab about uh, BP and SP's placement. Yes, sir. So they are located um, in the Dallas area in a foster placement, but a 30 day notice has been placed in reference. Okay. That's, that's what I was getting at. Um, when is that 30, um, when is that 30 days up? The 25th. Of November? Yes, yes, sir, this Saturday. Okay, and do you, do you have a, uh, as of right now, do you have a placement for them? I was informed that we do have a placement pending in Beaumont for those two. So when do you plan on moving them? Tomorrow, if, if depending on what you say. Okay. Well, when, when were you planning on moving them? Uh, I guess I would have to visit with my supervisor and, and talk about it, but it has to be done by Saturday. Okay. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, any, any questions from anyone for Ms. Robertson on these, these very narrow, specific issues? 
Um, when you say there are specific issues, does that include the uh, bedding arrangements? I just had a question on that. Yes, version. yes, it, it, it would, it would. Okay. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, in the photographs, there were just some bed frames. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And in I guess some prior photographs showed um, the egg crate. I guess you called it a mattress, but it's is it a mattress or is it more like a topper kind of thing? It's more of a topper, like like the egg crate type toppers. Okay. And are those going to be, or what, do you know if the intended use for moving those uh, toppers to be used with the bed frame that we saw? And is that the only thing that's going to be on the bed frame? I don't know the answer to that. Okay. All right. No further questions, Sean. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else real quickly? Just right. briefly, Judge, I was just thinking yes. because we were in person uh, last uh, last setting, um, I can scan those exhibits and redistribute them if they're not uh, available to everyone, including the court. Okay, DB. okay. well, the, the actual exhibits, uh, as you probably know, are in the clerk's file um, at the courthouse. So uh, what we might be able to do when we come back after lunch is I will have uh, enabled uh, the screen share feature. Uh, and so uh, if you wanted to uh, publish those uh, when we come back, uh, that that feature has been enabled. OK, so um, with that and, and I, I do want to uh, if you all could agree uh, that we take Ms. Stanley uh, next uh, when we come back from lunch. Are you all amenable to that? Certainly. Yes, Sean. OK, OK. Yes, Sean. All right. Thank you very much. Um, let me uh, remind everyone of the rule. It's uh, twelve oh nine. So let's uh, we'll be in recess until uh, twelve forty. Twelve forty. Okay. Judge, uh, just for yes. planning purposes, uh, yes. we have a request for you at least to meet with the older two children in chambers. And as far as coordinating that, if you were inclined to do that, I don't know if there need to be some logistical or rearranging or something that might be able to take it uh, place before in advance of if you were inclined to do that. Okay. Um, so uh, given the given the ages of the children, um, I, I think we would all agree that it's discretionary uh, per the code. So I'm going to continue to take that under advisement. I don't expect to meet with them, uh, if at all, uh, today. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, but thank you. Thank you for that. All right. We'll be in uh, recess. Don't forget to mute your devices or whatever you need to do. In the meantime, we'll see you back at 1240. Um, Ms. Stanley, good afternoon. Do you still have <laughs> do you still have Ms. McPherson with you? Yes, there yes. we are. <laughs> OK. All right. And uh, let's in the interest of PPSP and AP continuation of uh, motion hearing regarding um, placement uh, back with the uh, parents. All right. So, um, Ms. Stanley, we had um, uh, discussed uh, hearing from you uh, after lunch. So, Ms. McPherson, will it be you or Ms. Walker, will it be you? It'll be me, Your Honor. Okay, very good. You may proceed. Uh, yes, Ms. Stanley. Um, well, first of all, is there any objection? Uh, for Ms. Stanley testifying in the narrative? No objection. Okay. Uh, Ms. Stanley, uh, we're here on the placement of, of all three little girls, AP, SP, and PP. Um, and the issue today is whether or not they get placed back with the parents. Um, and what is your recommendation today and why? Um, at this time, Your Honor, I do not agree for the children to go home um, the parents um, have not completed their services, but most importantly, with uh, what the children have identified as uh, fighting in the home, um, BIP classes, the assessment is necessary, and also the BIP classes, counseling, completion of parenting, uh, individual counseling, moving into couples counseling, and also um, 
trauma-based counseling, uh, cognitive uh, based counseling for the children to be able to express what they need, what they desire, the changes in the home to be where they feel safe. And it is your understanding that currently AP is at a placement in Houston um, and she's able to stay there at least uh, 60 days plus an extension um, and that she's currently in school. Is that correct? Yes, I visited um, <clears throat> AP. Uh, it was approximately five days after placement. Uh, she was enrolled in school. I spoke to um the attendant there and uh, in a private setting and asked her how A was doing. Uh, she said she uh, was doing okay at school, but there was an issue with her bullying uh, other children and taking their, uh, their food and uh, snacks. Uh, but other than that, uh, she was adjusting. Uh, I spent some alone time with A. We played a, a board game um, and, um, I asked her if she knew why she was separated from her sisters, and she said, uh, because uh, we fight. And I certainly agreed with her what she had to say, because that was the reason that she was moved. And is it your understanding that if she was to, re that, first of all, is it your understanding um, that the department is still looking for a home for all three, and you thought they had found one in Beaumont that would take all three? Well, it is. And I would like to say that I've heard repeatedly it stated that the placement put in notice for the children, the placement, the foster mother only when I visited the home, I was there and the foster mother had already asked for Avery uh, to be placed out of her home due to the fighting. But it was her understanding that there was a, a home in that vicinity under the same placement agency where Avery could come back to the home on weekends. Um, and I've also heard it stated that the foster mother is the one who initiated uh, the removal of P uh, and S. And the foster, uh, the placement agency is the one who signed the documents, putting in notice, not the foster mother. So I wanted to make that clear that this foster mother and my testimony from my visit, uh, when I was in your court, Your Honor, I told you, I, I testified that Stormy was a different child. She was happy. Um, and uh, I had never seen that before. Um, and I just want to make it clear that the two girls uh, are improving um, with their behaviors because they were not, uh, notice was not given uh, on their behaviors for them to be moved. Also, the investigation, medical neglect, it was laughable. It was not investigated. It was closed. Uh, and as far as any allegations about shoes or clothing or dirty, uh, dirty clothing at school, uh, I personally saw probably seven to eight pair of shoes each. Sometimes the foster mom would allow the girls to pick out what they wanted to wear. If it was an old pair of shoes, she would let them do it. She wouldn't make a big deal out of that. Uh, but the closets were full of clothes. Um, so I just wanted to make it clear on, on uh, Stormy and um, P's behavior. They are better. And and unfortunately, did we did did we try to save this placement because of the children's wishes and because of the therapy that they were getting and and the foster home itself. Yes. Um, we had a personal, I'm sorry, we had a, a meeting um, phone call with the placement, with the CPS trying to iron out. It was a conflict of personalities. Uh, I am swearing under oath that is my assessment uh, compared to any um, any kind of deficiencies in that home. And as far as the medical neglect, is it your understanding that it all had to do with, apologize for this being on YouTube, but it only had to do with sanitary napkins being provided for AP? Yes. Or not? At school only. I didn't, um, Ms. McPherson, I'm sorry. I did not hear your question. Well, I just wanted to, to ask that this whole issue about a medical neglect investigation, 
into the foster home? Did it have um, only to do with the alleged lack of providing AP with sanitary napkins at school? Yes, and I think uh, Avery said a little discomfort, which is a natural occurrence during that time for anyone, especially young girls. And and then of course it's it's been closed and closed and or ruled out. Correct. Closed is the letter that I I received from the foster mom. Um, now, as far as this potential placement in Beaumont, um, can you do you know anything about that? Do you have any information on that? Well, I'm a little in the dark because uh, I know that uh, for weeks now, uh, Buckner's has been working with the department. Uh, I stepped out, but it was my understanding that Miss Weber had uh, room for all three girls. Uh, but there seems to be some shove back and I'm, that's not, uh, I'm not involved in that. I don't know who uh, Miss Robertson is talking about. Uh, I, she said Kuntz, that there was a, a foster home in Kuntz identified. Now it's Beaumont. So I'm, I don't know. Um, but if the kids were able to be moved closer to home, do you think that would be beneficial for the family um, and for the children? Yes. Um, and that would allow some more if the parent because is it your understanding that at one point the parents themselves did not want to have in-person visits correct that is correct i have an email uh from miss learning i wanted to know when the visits were in person so i could attend since the girls were in houston and i do have a, an email from miss learning that there are no visits uh that uh, uh miss perkins did not want visits at this time and that went on for months um, and you understand, um, you know, that there was also probably some transportation issues, even with the parents, correct? It's very difficult uh, when you, you have children in Houston, you have um, the parents in Crystal Beach. Um, that's, that's very difficult. And would you also have a concern in the case um, to, for the parents not only to finish these classes and courses that they need to take, but they still need to demonstrate. Is that correct? Absolutely. Um, and does the do you have concerns about their frequent uh, breakups? Their frequent they're not together. They're together, and and that the stability of their home in relationship. Yes. And I'm not going to go into the whole psychological, psychiatric, or psychosocial because I think that's been gone over. But if the Psychiat just if I can ask you this, if the psychiatric evaluation and the psychosocial doesn't go in as in-depth as a full psychological, would you still have them, would you still recommend a full psychological? Yes. Um, Your Honor, I, I, unless you needed something else for me, I'm going to pass her as a witness. All right. Thank you, Ms. Oh, Walker. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it in the children's best interest um, that the parents work on their services prior to any placement in the home of the three children? Work on services, uh, learn from those services, demonstrate uh, what they can take away and um, become the parents that these children need. All right. Thank you, Ms. Walker. Um, just one question, Ms. Stanley, um, if the court uh, did determine that the children um, should be returned to the parents' home at this time, do you see any, I guess, I don't know, maybe lack of a better word, benefit if there, if the all three children weren't moved at the same time? In other words, if Avery was, I'm sorry, AP was placed in the, in the home first or the other two placed first, do you see any advantage over that or if the, it is a determination that they be returned home that all go at the same time that is not I, I, I can't even suggest no no this is not the right time for the children to go home I can't so even for, yeah. <laughs> for neither one of the even just one of the children you wouldn't even that's no. not a, a recommendation no okay all right no further questions all right thank you Mr. McCatherine I just wanted to ask Ms. Stanley if she had any information or an update on um, AP's medication that was supposed to be 
evaluated. Do you know if there's an update on that? No. Okay. You, re you recall at our hearing in October where judge ordered that to be reevaluated? Yes. Okay. And so you don't you don't know anything from the department or any updates? You haven't heard anything? Okay. That's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Stanley. All right. Thank you, Mr. Crocker. No questions, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Thank you. Back to you, Ms. McPherson. I don't have any further questions, Your Honor. So, Ms. Stanley, is it correct that whatever the reason or whoever asked for it regarding the, the discharge notice, uh, is it is it fair to say that that placement is, is ending and no longer an option? It, it can't be recouped? It cannot. Uh, there okay. has been so much happened that she's closing her home down. Hmm. Okay. So uh, are you okay with this uh, purported placement or move to of uh, PP and SP to this foster home in Beaumont? Yes. In, in your view, Do the girls need to be placed together, all three, right now, or do they need a respite of sorts from, say, one as opposed to the other? A respite of sorts because of the uh, of Avery uh, and her aggression. I did see Stormy's black eye it was healing up when I made my visit. So, um, yeah, definitely. Uh, respite from each other okay how would you um characterize the or critique constructively how ap's being on the spectrum is being addressed well through the uh the foster home that she was in, I believe she was getting what she needed. Um, and the foster mom was addressing uh, all of her needs. I didn't know if you wanted me to, I have a follow up unless you had one, Your Honor. Well, um, I, I might, but you you go ahead, Ms. McPherson. Okay. Um, and the current foster home that she is in, is it your understanding that they're also addressing her needs along with her uh, diagnosis on the spectrum? In the current mm -hmm. age, current? Yes. Well, it, I can. Uh, I was impressed by the, um, the staff mother that was there. She has 17 years experience and... Uh, um, I feel like it's adequate at this time. Now, as far as the parents, um, it's your understanding that the children weren't enrolled in school prior to the removal. Is that correct? Correct. Do you think that that was addressing APs, uh, special needs, by her not being enrolled in a in a in a school? I'm sorry. Thanks. Okay, I'm sorry. It's your understanding that all the children were were withdrawn from school yes. um, in or around April of 2022. Mm -hmm. Is that your understanding? And by not having AP enrolled in school, do you think that affected the the her getting the benefits and and the, and all the the things that the school can provide oh, to yes. help her with her with her and her um, in the spectrum? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, that's caused a further delay. Uh, and when she quit school April the 22nd, that means that whole year uh, was lost. Um, and not just for AP, but all the children. All the children. Ms. Uh, Stanley, do you do you know what school district uh, the parents' new home is, is in? Uh, it will be Hardin-Jefferson. 
All right. And what, if anything, do you know about the services they could provide uh, to someone who is, well, 11 um, and, and on the spectrum and who has deficiencies in education? Um, well, I'm not real familiar with Harden Jefferson. Uh, I've only had one child there that requires arts, and they were on top of it, uh, helping this particular child in a private case uh, with services um, within the school district. Uh, I don't think there would be one complaint uh, with Harden, Harden Jefferson Independent School District. Um, now, as far as uh, Pauline and, oh, I'm sorry, P and S, uh, I think they will thrive as soon as they become familiar with uh, the school district that they're in. Uh, I don't know where this foster home is in Beaumont uh, and what school district that they would fall under. I don't. There's some good. There's some not so good. I don't know if they would uh, be in Amelia uh, or not. That information wasn't shared. If it was the, the home that you were thinking about. It would have been Amelia. And that's a good school district? Yes. The good school in, in Beaumont? Yes. All right, but me. Your, and, and it's oh, not, um, it's also your understanding, and, and I don't know if she can do anything about it because it's the agency, but is the foster mom actually the foster mom for, a, for PP and SP? She's actually willing to keep them a little bit longer over the Thanksgiving break if it was possible mm -hmm. at all. Well, when I spoke to her last night, uh, she uh, didn't tell the girls they were moving, but her parents came in for the weekend to say goodbye. And if they were going to be there for the Thanksgiving holidays, uh, they were going to her parents' uh, property so they could fish again one more time, one last time with the girls. That over the girls Thanksgiving. Yes. Over Thanksgiving. Yes. All right. And there's... There wouldn't be any any lapse uh, in her licensing, would it? No. Okay. All right. Any other questions from anyone for Ms. Stanley? No, you are. Ms. Stanley, I I believe uh, that I that I understand um, your your certainly your recommendation and your reasons, your concerns, and your your position regarding the parents' um, services, uh, lack of services, lack of demonstration. Um, uh, hypothetically, would would you have more or less or the same concerns if the parents were not together as a couple? Less. If, if it's humanly possible, everything else, and it may not be, everything else aside, do you have other than than relapse in history do you have any uh do you believe that the parents can presently at the very least provide a drug-free environment no okay do you do you care to expand on that yes uh jimmy uh, perkins has a history of alcohol abuse so alcohol being a drug. Uh, Ms. Perkins demonstrates uh, time and time again, she can, um, she can stop meth, she can do it, but, but Jimmy and alcohol, I don't think that's possible. Okay. All right, thank you. Any, any other questions from anyone for Ms. Stanley? Okay. 
All right. Ms. Stanley, thank you very much. Um, with that, then I believe we can bring Ms. Uh, Perkins back. Ms. Perkins, uh, I, let me remind you that you are still under oath in this matter. Um, we're going to try to pick up right where we left off. You were testifying. Uh, Ms. Um, Ms. McPherson, I believe, had you on uh, cross exam. So um, we'll get your video going here. And um, Ms. McPherson, you may proceed. Well, I think she just dropped off. Um, yes, um, we kind of left off last time. First of all, I do want to tell you that um, I didn't get to say this earlier, but I do, uh, you know, give my condolences on your mother. I, I know Thank how you. hard that is. Okay, so I, I don't, I, that wasn't lost on me, okay? Okay. Um, now, you know, we were going back and forth, I think the last time on, uh, you know, there was a psychosocial, there was a psychiatric evaluation, whether or not she had a psychological but you've had psychologicals done in, in previous cases, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and do you recall being diagnosed with bipolar one disorder? No, ma'am. Um, do you recall being uh, diagnosed with major depressive disorder? I've been diagnosed with depression, with generalized depression, I think. What about ADHD? Yes. Um, and then, of course, uh, substance use disorder, correct? Yes. Um, and what medications are you currently on? Wellbutrin and Prozac. Okay, what is the Wellbut Wellbutrin for? My depression. And the Prozac? Anxiety. Now, you've also done several... Um, Substance abuse evaluation, correct? I've in done three. You've done three substance abuse evaluations in this case? No, just two in this case. Okay, Your Honor, I'm trying to find. Do you remember when the first? Oh. Do you remember when the first one was done? I don't remember the date. Uh, I think it was in December or January. Of which year? December of last year or January of this year. Okay. And do you remember where you went for that? The first one was um, ADAC and Beaumont. Okay. And in that, um, were there mental, there were some mental health questions on that one, correct? Yes. Okay. Um I and so on that one, you answered, um, I, I have it in front of me, that did you answer yes to being depressed for weeks at a time, lost interest or pleasure in most activities, had trouble concentrating and make decisions, and felt like giving up because you feel things are not going to get better? Do you recall if you answered yes or no to that, that on that one? I do not recall. Okay. If I, uh, so if you answered yes, that would be a, that you wouldn't object to that, correct? Well, I mean, it wasn't always for weeks at a time. Did you answer it? Just an did you answer yes or no to that question? If you, re I would say no because it's not for weeks at a time. Um, have you ever had? Did you? Do you? Did you answer? Isn't it true that you answered yes to this question? And it's multiple questions in one. Have you ever had a period of time when you were so full of energy and your ideas came very rapidly? When you talked nearly nonstop? when you move quickly from one activity to another, when you needed a little sleep and you believed you could do almost anything? No. Um, and on this one, it asks you, um, did you indicate yes, that you abused alcohol in the last 30 days and the substance was methamphetamine? Yes. Um, did you... Isn't it true that you answered yes, that you have gotten sick or had withdrawal if you quit drinking or missed uh, taking a drug in the last 12 months? Yes. Isn't it true that you answered yes, 
Have you tried to cut down on alcohol or drugs and weren't able to do it? Yes. Isn't it true that you answered yes, that you spend a lot of time getting alcohol or drugs, using them or recovering from their use? I don't recall what I answered on that one. Um, isn't it true that you answered yes, that you've gotten so high or sick from alcohol or drugs that it kept you from doing work, going to school or caring for children? No. Isn't it true that you answered yes, that you've gotten so high or sick from alcohol or drugs that it caused an accident or became a danger to you or others? No. Have you gotten, isn't it true that you answered yes, that you have gotten so high or sick from alcohol or drugs that it caused physical health or medical problems? I mean, it has. Um, is that answer just in a yes or no? Yes. Um, isn't it true that you answered yes, that your use of alcohol or drugs caused emotional or psychological problems? Yes. And isn't it true that you answered, has your use of alcohol or drugs caused problems with family, friends, work, or police? Yes. Um, and that was, you believe, at the end of December or early January 2023, correct? Yes, somewhere around in there. Okay. Now, you had another um, ADAC assessment, correct? Do you remember when that was and where it was taken? It was through ADAPT, and it was in June or July. Okay, does July 11th, 2023 sound familiar? Yes. Okay. Um, and in that one, um, what was, did you answer yes? It, isn't it true that you answered yes, that you had, last, you had used alcohol drugs in the last 30 days? I mean, it, it's, 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 I'm asking you, isn't it true? So the answer, non objecting to the non responsive part. Who's saying? No. Um, uh, objection to the non responsive. Isn't it true that you into that you wrote it, yet you answered that the substance was alcohol? Okay, yes. And isn't it true on that one that in the last 12 months that you t you answered yes, or have you gotten sick or had withdrawal if you quit drinking or mistaken or drunk? No. And isn't it true that you answered yes, that you tried to cut down alcohol or drugs and were unable to do it? No. Isn't it true that you answered yes, that you have gotten so high or sick from alcohol or drugs that it caused physical health or medical problems? No. And isn't it true that your use of alcohol, that you answered yes, to has your use of alcohol or drugs caused problems with family, friends, work, or police? No. And isn't it true that you answered yes? Have you increased the amount of alcohol or drugs you were taking so that you could get the same effect as before? No. And isn't it true that you answered yes? Have you continued drinking or taking a drug to avoid withdrawal to keep from getting sick? Are we asking about the last 12 months or just the last few months? That's just a question that is on the A and you're not to ask me a question, but this is not, does not have an indication of within the, well, during the last 12 months. Yes. Have you increased yet? Have, did you answer? Yes. Isn't it true? You answered yes. That during the past 12 months, have you increased the amount of alcohol or drugs you were taking so that you could get the same effect as before? Yeah, I guess. Um, your honor object to the non-responsive part i don't think i don't think it's non-responsive just because it's not the answer she wants she doesn't recall overruled. overruled um isn't it true that you answered yes that during the last past 12 months you've continued drinking or taking a drug to avoid withdrawal to keep from getting sick i don't remember um and isn't it true that you answered yes you often feel like giving up because you feel things are not going to get better I probably did with that one, yes. Okay. Um, now, so if I was to provide the assessments, um, is there any of these answers that you would like to change? 
I guess not because I mean honestly I don't remember what I put and what I didn't put. Um, now you said that you went for a psychosocial assessment with Alice, Miss Allison, who testified earlier today. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Do you um were you completely honest in those answers that you provided? Yes. So when it says you denied any mental health issues, is that correct? I told her that I had anxiety and depression and I had been diagnosed with ADHD. Okay. Uh, if I'm reading this, um, would you deny that you said this? She also denied any mental health issues, including diagnosis of anxiety, depression, panic attacks, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, PTSD, ADHD, autism, or eating disorder. Um, what was the first part of that question? You don't have to repeat what you said, but what was the first part? Do you deny that that's what was stated in the psychosocial assessment? I do remember telling her that I had those three things. But it says, do you deny that it? So if she put that she denied that, are you disagreeing with that? I'm not going to say I disagree or agree because I might have told her later on, but I do know I did tell her because she told me it was situational. Objection to the non-responsive and the narrative. Sustained as to non-responsive. Now, in, you went for a psychiatric evaluation in August of 2023, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And in that one, um, you pretty much, isn't it true? You pretty much denied everything. Uh, you denied um, that you get less sleep than usual. You denied, you just denied, you denied just about everything in there. Isn't that correct? I can't speak upon that because I don't know exactly which ones are what. Okay. So when it was asked about the mood disorder um, on the questionnaire, you denied periods of time where you got less sleep, um, that you were more talkative, racing thoughts, easily distracted, did things that were foolish and are risky and spent money recklessly. You denied periods of time in which was, you was more self-confident than usual, more social outgoing irritable, interested in sex than usual, and was hyperactive, that you denied all of those things, correct? Yeah. Okay. You denied suicidal ideation, suicide attempts, homicidal ideation, auditory and visual hallucinations, paranoid ideation, delusions of grandeur, grandeur, and any history of self-injurious behavior, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, you denied that you were feeling edgy or nervous, feeling worried about different things, being able to stop or control worrying being not able to relax and becoming easily annoyed or irritable. And you denied feeling restless or feeling afraid that something awful might happen. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then you also denied having falling and staying asleep, having a poor appetite or overeating, feeling bad about herself, feeling like a failure for letting down her family and herself and having little interest or pleasure in doing things. You denied having trouble concentrating on things, feeling tired or having little energy and feeling down, depressed or hopeless. You denied having thoughts that she would be better off dead or hurting herself and moving and speaking slowly. It's slower. Is that correct? I don't even remember those questions. Uh, did you deny having thoughts that you should cut down on her drinking or drug use and feeling bad or guilty about drinking or drug use? I did deny because at the time I wasn't having any drug use or drinking. So your data evaluation was 8-2. And on July 11th, you admitted to alcohol use. So I used, so you weren't having any alcohol use at that time? Is that what you're saying? I wasn't having problems cutting down or stopping. Okay, so you're not denying that you were drinking alcohol, correct? I, I drank a beer. Um, did you deny that you felt annoyed by people criticizing your her alcohol or drug use? And did you deny drinking or using drugs first thing in the morning to steady her nerves or get rid of a hangover? Yes. Okay. Now, you did report that you were diagnosed with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, depression, and anxiety in 2012, correct? Yes. Okay. So, um, at this time of this psychiatric evaluation that you 
had stopped taking Welbutrin in March of 2023. Is that correct? Yes. Um, although that had been prescribed for you for a very long time, correct? Yes. Um, and you also had last taken, you were also di uh, prescribed Adderall for your ADHD, correct? Yes. And that you stopped taking that three years ago? Yes. Um, now, you reported that you drink alcohol occasionally and you stopped drinking a long time ago, but that's not exactly true, is it? Because you just testified that you had had a beer. I had just beer. reported, isn't that correct? I had one beer. But when you that you stopped drinking, isn't stopping drinking not having even one beer, correct? I guess so. Um, how many how many cigarettes do you smoke a day? Mm, maybe two or three. Okay, so when you say half a pack a pack of cigarettes daily in August, that's is that correct? It was correct then. And you started smoking at the age of ten. Yep. Um. Now you goes into your family psychiatric history, um, and it talks about that your 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 mother was diagnosed with situational depression and your sister with depression. Yes. Um, is that correct? Yes. Was there any other diagnosis in the family? No. Um, you denied any history of drug abuse in the family. Yeah, other than my dad being an alcoholic. Okay. Um, and did it also indicate that your mother tried to kill herself when she was being <laughs> used by her husband? Yeah, three or four times. Okay. And is that husband, who is that? Is that your stepfather or your no, father? That is my biological father. Okay. Um, and you also denied any childhood physical and or sexual abuse or any history of domestic violence. Is that correct? I, when I was a kid, I did not have physical or sexual abuse. Did you? Would you consider your father drinking too much and uh, him abusing your mother to be domestic violence in the home? It would be emotional or mental abuse towards me. But would it be domestic violence in the home? Yeah. Okay. Um, you are a high school graduate, correct? Yes, ma'am. Now, um... Where are you, you? You were working at a lumber store. Yeah. It's reported um, you reported services completed in your psychiatric evaluation. Um, isn't it true that you reported that services completed that you had attended parenting, couple therapy, individual therapy, and outpatient drug group? Isn't that correct? No, I told them that I was working on them. Objection. But in, if I tell you that under her part that services completed. That you reported you had attended all of those. Is there any reason to dispute that? Yes, because I'd never told anybody I completed them. Okay. I'm in the process of doing them. Um, now, the diagnosis that you got from the psychiatric evaluation, um, she diagnosed, or, hmm, diagnosed generalized anxiety disorder by history, unspecified depressive disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity, hyperactivity disorder, methamphetamine use disorder and nicotine dis dependence. Do you have any reason to, uh, are those a diagnosis that, that this Dr. Parag put on his evaluation? Yes, she put them on there. Okay. Um, and she also put some psychosocial stressors is CPS involvement in a housing problem. Is that correct? Yes. Um, and do you recall what, do you remember that the recommendations from that was you should continue to have random urine drug screens, correct? Yes. Attend NA programs to help her attain and maintain sobriety. Yes. Um, you were asked if you put back on Will Butin and Prozac, correct? Yes. Now, it said a follow-up visit in three weeks. Have you followed up with uh, Dr. Farrakh? No. And why not? Because she, I was not aware that I had to follow up with her. She did not tell me that. Okay. Did you receive a copy of your psychiatric evaluation? Not until the last week. Um, and it said also that you should remain under psychiatric care. Is that correct? Yes. And that you should apply for housing assistance. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Have you done, have, and you have applied for housing? Yes. Um, which, which housing authority? The Beaumont Housing Authority. There's not many that are open, right? They are open year round. Um. 
and you have not done what is considered a, a psychological evaluation in this case. You've done a psychosocial, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And you've done a psychiatric? Yes, ma'am. I um, called the psychological. Any of the non responsive? Explain. Okay, so you've got you 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 testified earlier. You got married to Mr. Perkins in 2014, correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, and in December 8th of 2022, isn't it true that you stated you were no longer living with Mr. Perkins? Yes. And that you were living in a shelter in Jasper. No, I was in Beaumont. Um. And at that time, in December of 2022, you would you stated you would prefer virtual visits. Yes. Um, and you also stated at that time that you're legally married, but you were going to get a divorce as soon as possible. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And in April 3rd of 2023, um, did you indicate if you were going to... Um, Follow through with the divorce. And what was your, what did you tell them? Tell who? The caseworker. Did you indicate if you were going to follow through on a divorce in April of 2023? I don't remember. And uh, Mr. Perkins, if you'll take off your cap as, as we're in court, please, sir. Thank you. Now, when did you move to uh, Galveston County? The end of March. And you moved to Galveston County by yourself. Is that correct? Yes. Because you were you indicated you were no longer in a relationship with Mr. Perkins. Is that correct? At that present time, we were not. Um, was and then a few days later, did Mr. Perkins move to to Galveston County? Yes, ma'am. How many? So you indicated earlier too that instead of fighting. You, you indicated that you, you guys really didn't fight, that you bicker at the home, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and that when you feel stressed or anything, you leave the home. Is that correct? No, whenever we would get into, when we would start arguing, I would leave. And how long would when you I feel leave? stressed. And how long would you leave for? 30 minutes to an hour. I'd walk to the store and back. Have you ever left for days at a time? Uh, when we separated. And how long would you stay separated? There was one time it was probably closer to three weeks. And how often? That was probably the longest period. And how many times have you split up with Mr. Perkins? Two or three. And you got in a relationship while he was incarcerated, correct? When was this? Uh, this was in 2019. Like when, are you, when are you talking about? Like 2019? Objection relevancy, Your Honor. Sustained. Yeah, no. It's, it's fair to say, though, that when things get rough, you kind of leave? No. How is you going to... Uh, what's different this time around in this case compared to your other case? What is, what is different, in your opinion of why now you can be the parent that these children deserve to have. Well, I've always tried to be the parent they deserve to have other than when my mom relapsed and I kind of lost it. I mean, when my mom died and I lost my mind because the one person that other than my husband and my kids that was important to me was gone. Okay. I so didn't have a support system at that. So the difference is you, you now have a support system you didn't have in your prior case? that and I know my coping skills I know how to watch for triggers and how to get away from triggers and I mean I've learned a lot in my outpatient so what exactly did you learn in your outpatient that I need to set personal boundaries and the boundaries that I set are not for other people they're for myself and that I need to watch who I let around my uh, into my life and around me so and I so the people that you provided to me the other day that are your support system, a lot of those wouldn't be able to be placement because of prior CPS history. Is that correct? 
Yes, ma'am. And because they don't have the space. But some of them is because of the CP prior CPS cases. So when you're telling me that you've learned um, about people, places, and things, how are you going to demonstrate that, Mrs. Perkins? Because if I have a, even an inkling that somebody's on drugs or going to be a danger to my kids, they're not going to come around. And does that include Mr. Perkins? And if it's somewhere that, no. Does that include Mr. To, Perkins? He's not a danger to my kids. Um, did you hear the testimony about the changes in the things that your children have observed and what they want changed? Yes, ma'am. I, I did hear what they said. Um, and do you recall that during this case that Pauline and one of her and collaborated by her sister that Mr. Perkins choked her when she was four yes. years old? That case was ruled out. No, was it ruled out or unable to determine? She told me she was going to close it. Um, do you know the difference between ruled out and unable to determine? I guess I don't. Okay. And um, I know what I was told. And you, I know that there's a lot of things you're saying, and I, you know, that the department hasn't done. Okay. In this case, I know that there's a lot of that. Um, but you had the department coming into your life regarding the allegations back in August of 2022. Isn't that correct? Yes. And from August of 2022 until you moved in at the end of March of 2023, what services did you get initiated? Well, uh, none, I guess. We didn't have transportation to do anything. And between um, the time the children were removed in, uh, in, no in November of 2022 until you moved to Galveston, how many times did you visit with your children in person? None. And your first in-person visit was in May of 2023, is that correct? Yes. And why did you choose not to see the children for that length of time? It was not my choice. I told Sydney in the beginning of January, January or February, that I wanted to start having visits with the girls. I don't know why we didn't but the reason that i didn't want to have visits with them in person was because i did not think that i was mentally stable like not mentally stable but i would not be able to handle walking away from my kids if they were crying screaming wanting to come home that would put through more trauma as well as me would it be fair to say that it wasn't january or february but it was toward the end of march that you let miss sydney lordy know that you wanted to start in-person visits no ma'am because i know it was in january or february Tell me about this, uh, which are, again, if the children were to be placed with you, tell, tell me about your day-to-day -day with them. Well, I mean, we'd get up, get ready for school. I'd put them on the bus, uh, go to work if I have to work. If not, then I'll stay home and do what I've got to do around here. They get off the bus, we'll do homework and eat, eat a snack, get ready for supper, eat supper, take a bath, go to bed play when we're not doing other stuff okay so you know what i didn't hear during that recitation is i didn't hear about any helping them with homework mrs perkins i did i said we would do homework i and what about therapy sessions for the children well that's not a day-to-day -day. if they have to have it every day we'll do it but if it's you know a day to day to me is what I'm going to do every day, the same routine. If it's therapy, we'll go to therapy. Now, you don't have a current vehicle again, correct? No, ma'am, I do not. Um, and you would have to rely. Oops, did she? Oh, someone, did someone knock off? Because I don't. She is to the right. Okay, I did. It's changed screens. I didn't want to make. I wanted to make sure that uh, no one was off the screen. Now, you isn't it true that you withdrew the children 
Avery, I mean, AP and SP from school, from the Silsby Elementary on April 8th of 2022. Is that correct? I did. And they were enrolled only from November 1st of 2021, correct? Yes. And prior to that, they were enrolled August 11th, 21 to August 31st of 21. And prior to that, they were enrolled uh, September 1st of 2020 to 528 of 21. Is that all correct? I guess so. Okay. Um, and on here, is it is it your under you put on there for the reasons for re with with re with withdrawing them is for the two first ones it was because of, of homeschooling, correct? Yes. Okay. And also notated on the withdrawal information um, that you put per parent request, CPS is not allowed to interview student. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. For both children, correct? Yes, ma'am. Now, you have testified, isn't, let me ask you this. These, these behaviors that your three children are showing, the, the fighting, first of all, has there been fighting in your home between the children? They fight like siblings, but there's never been any physical. So you're saying there's been no physical violence in the home between the children? No. What about the uh, the the urinating on themselves? Avery did sometimes at night. Other times it was because she was on her tablet for too long. She didn't want to get up because she was too into her game. So I started putting a timer that would lock her tablet until she got up and went to the bathroom, and I unlocked it. What about defecating on themselves? The only time she did that was like once or twice because she was on her tablet. And and which one are we talking about? Is that only AP? Yes. Okay. So has AP ever had problems prior to this with hitting any other children anywhere else? No, not that I'm aware of. Okay. So when you took AP in for a, a doctor's visit regarding um, the allegation that she had a rash back in 2017, uh, isn't it true that mother states patient has many problems in school. Mother states page PT hits teachers and other children. Is that incorrect? I don't remember. That was, I don't know how long ago. Well, if I said it was in 2017, do you have any reason to dispute that? I'll object on relevancy and I'll object on uh, base of res judicata, Your Honor. Your Honor, she has testified that there was no issues prior to the... Sustained. Not that I can remember. Wait for the next question. As it uh, as it turns out, uh, Ms. McPherson, uh, we are going to uh, conclude uh, today at two. Okay. So uh, you you may continue for another few moments, um, or or you may pass the witness. I will I will say that I am uh, recessing, looking to recess this hearing until the 28th or two to the 28th at 930. I, I know Ms. Uh, Ms. Walker, Mr. Crocker and Ms. McPherson are already going to be uh, at that docket. Um, Your Honor, maybe not Ms. Walker. I plan to be off that day before you said okay. the, at the hearing, but we're working on that. OK. All right. Your, your Honor. Given that I have about eight minutes left, um, I will, um, I'm not passing, but since I have to go through some notes here, Honor, um, I didn't know if you wanted to to recess now or have me just ask a couple more questions, because um, I probably do have more questions, Your Honor. I just have to review some of my notes. All right. Uh, fair enough. Mr. McCatherine? Uh, I was just hoping we could be done. I, I to be honest with you, Judge. I, I don't. I don't have any more witnesses. I don't know if anybody else does either. But I was really hoping. Mr. Crocker, Mr. Crocker, uh, are you going to call uh, Mr. Perkins? And I'm, in your honor, I'm with Mr. McCather, and of course, I could always cross-examine Mr. Perkins, but if the judge, if the, if the court has enough information to make a ruling today. All 
All right. Uh, let's um, let's see if we the, can hear. Let's see if we can hear from Mr. Crocker. Was was anyone going to call Mr. Perkins if Mr. Crocker did not? I was not. If if the judge has enough, Your Honor, to make a ruling today, I was not. So. All right. So you would not you would not call uh, Mr. Perkins if Mr. Crocker did not call him today. Correct. Miss um, Miss McPherson and Miss Walker, uh, the court uh, the court is ready to rule. Um. So with that, uh, judge, yeah, I, I was just letting you know that I uh, I was unsuccessful in getting in touch with. Um, Mr. Crocker, uh, okay. it's my understanding that I don't believe he was going to call Mr. Perkins but, okay. uh, from an earlier discussion he and I had. Okay. All right. Thank you. I I did ask him to unmute, but um, he may not be getting that uh, signal signal either. So uh, the court believes that it's ready uh, to rule Ms. Walker and uh, Ms. McPherson. Um, but if there, uh, if there were one or two uh, questions, knowing that that you had of of the mother, I'll let I'll let you ask him uh, now. Yeah, I only had uh, really one question, and that was one. It might have evolved into two in regards to um, the children's schooling. Um, it seems they were pulled out of school at least two or three times, and one child specifically expressed. Um, needing to know how to read. So if the children were to be returned home, my question would be in regards to were they going to be enrolled in school? They will be put in Harvard Harding Jefferson. I, actually, I could have answered that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that was it, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Ms. McPherson. Your Honor, I don't believe I would have any more questions um, that I can think of at this time, Your Honor. All right. All right. Uh, based um, on the evidence, the best interest of the children and uh, their safety uh, being of um, paramount concern and, and primary consideration, under the totality of uh, the circumstances, uh, the court uh, hereby uh, orders uh, placement of the child AP back with her parents by the end of tomorrow. She is to be hereby, she shall be uh, forthwith enrolled uh, in school. Monday of next week, and um, the parents and the department are ordered to cooperate with uh, that, provided uh, the school district is open uh, Monday. The court uh, further orders in regards to PP and SP that they shall remain um, at their current placement, if possible, throughout Thanksgiving weekend, after which time they are to be placed in the aforementioned foster home in Beaumont on or about November the 27th, 2023. The department is ordered to make reasonable efforts to set up family therapy as soon as possible. The department is further ordered to create a visitation, an in-person visitation plan supervised uh, between PP and SP and the parents. That would, of course, include AP. The court
court further orders that there shall be um, Mr. and Mrs. Perkins no corporal punishment no spanking no uh, swatting no grabbing or the like yes sir if you need further explanation uh, as to what that is or is not to get with your attorney and your caseworker is it physical physical punishment that's correct no no corporal punishment yes as if your as honor if this is glenn crocker i'm sorry to inter uh, interject here i've been <laughs> trying to talk for the last 10 minutes apparently uh I've had some technical issue, um, and I apologize for getting in the middle of your ruling. Go, go ahead, Mr. Crocker. Are you just announcing? I, I just want. I want. Oh, I have no questions to Mr. Perkins, and I am present. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So, no corporal punishment. No. No. Absolutely no consumption of alcohol or uh, illicit drugs. Um, or uh, prescription drugs in a manner in which is not prescribed by the parents. There shall be no contact uh, by the older brother. My my apologies. His name leaves me right now. Um, I want to say Dalton, but I don't remember. Yes, it's Dalton. So yes, my sir. apologies. My apologies to all the Daltons out there if that's not his name. Uh, also, no unsupervised uh, contact. No unsupervised contact with uh, an uncle Wes. Furthermore, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Perkins, there shall be no arguing and no fighting of you all uh, whatsoever. All right. So if if that uh, if you can help that occurring, come up with a plan. Uh, we're in. Uh, it would be completely um, uh, positive, productive and and off off AP's radar screen uh, completely yes, um, and just be normal. Um, familial uh, communication and decision-making. Yes. All right. Furthermore, uh, uh, Mr. Okay. Ms. Perkins, you're ordered to immediately inform the department of any changes in circumstances regarding either one of you, the child, uh, or your home. Okay. Uh, Ms. Perkins, you are ordered uh, to maintain uh, your uh, psychiatric care under uh, uh, the advice uh, and direction of your medical doctor. Both of you are ordered to continue to submit to any requests for drug and or alcohol testing. You are to continue working your respective service plans and the necessary demonstration. And I, I know that you are, uh, you rely on others. Uh, I, I believe the testimony was that you both have your driver's license, but your uh, uh, transportation is the issue right now. You're having to rely on others. So uh, to that end, um, whenever your children are in a vehicle, they must be supervised by one of you. That driver must be licensed. That driver shall not have any warrants. Um, that you are after reasonable inquiry uh, made aware of. And that that I, I, I got to think that, you know, you were your friends and your associates, and you know who has histories of using drugs and who doesn't. No one who has a history, as far as you all are concerned, of any drug use, alcohol abuse, uh, shall at any time, clean, sober, otherwise, uh, provide transportation uh, with uh, AP in the car. All right, so the court uh, finds its ruling uh, to be in the best interest of all three children, Right now, our next hearing is for a permanency on January the 16th at 9. Our dismissal is May the 4th, 2024. Final trial is March the 5th at 1.30. Any questions, any questions uh, about my ruling or uh, future settings or otherwise? I'll start with Ms. Walker. No, Your Honor. Did you say uh, trial March the 5th, was it? I, I believe, yes, March the 5th at, at 1.30. At 1.30, okay. Okay, I'm just going to keep going around the circle. Mr. McCatherin, any? I think I got it all, Judge. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Mr. Crocker? I guess no questions, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. 
Um, Ms. McPherson? Surprisingly, no questions, Your Honor. Well, um, <laughs> you know, I just thought of I just thought of one thing I left out. Uh, I, I left out in my ruling. I didn't leave it in, out in my notes here. Um, let, let me let me find it so I can read it uh, roughly like I wrote it. Okay, yeah, here it is, Mr. and Mrs. Perkins. You're also uh, ordered uh, to uh, allow access. You must allow access to uh, the department. They are, after all, the temporary managing conservators. Uh, Ms. Stanley uh, and Ms. McPherson. Anytime they, yeah, I, I got your name in there, Ms. McPherson. Does that include the school, Your Honor? Well, they put it on with contact with CPS. I just want to make sure that it's not in the school's records. No contact with us. That that would include the school. That would include the school. So in part of the, I, I think they'll be going to a different school, um, uh, Harden Jefferson and not Silsby. So when uh, the Perkins and the department enroll AP, then they will need to address that and make sure uh, that that is permitted, if not expected, uh, when the child is in enrolled. That is, uh, the department's access is managing conservator. Your access is attorney ad litem and, and Ms. Stanley's access is guardian ad litem. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. And also, uh, Your Honor, I'm, I'm hoping that I know that the department will, if there's any uh, ARD meetings, I'd like to be included in the ARD. Yes, and I would expect there should be uh, rather, rather quickly. Um, yes. Okay. One ancillary issue that, that uh, my yeah. client brought up, Judge, and I just yeah. want to, while everyone's here, um, mm -hmm. with the lack of transportation, uh, the, the parents are asking if they could be notified of a drug test the night before so that uh, so that Mr. Perkins can go on, uh, so he cannot go to work and be stuck at work without transportation to the drug test, maybe late okay. that night before. Okay, I, I think uh, I think that is reasonable. I, I, re I believe I recall the testimony was that his his boss uh, goes out of his way to pick him up uh, early every morning. So yes, yes, uh, if the department wants to, it'll still be random um, and uh, no no funny stuff with the tests. I don't expect it, but um, yes. Uh, so notify them uh, at the, the afternoon or the evening uh, the day before. Um, and also the, at which time the parents uh, need to let the department know whether uh, they need some sort of assistance in transportation. The department will be ordered uh, to make reasonable efforts, so it, it may not be possible. The department can provide transportation to all of us, So, um, but uh, they, they do make their reasonable efforts. Uh, they shall. Okay. All right. Any, anything else from anyone else? Uh, Ms. McPherson, um, in in this uh, visitation uh, plan and schedule with uh, PP and SP. Um, again, I want that in person and I want it, um, of course, supervised. Um, but given, and again, I want the, we all want the children in family therapy, the family in family therapy yesterday. Uh, but um, I'll not approve anything that's under, uh, that's less than two times a month. For in person? Uh, yeah, I, I really, I really want it to be weekly, but I understand that just may not be possible. Okay, so if we have to do every other week in person, every other week virtual, um, then we'll we'll do that too. I, I know the girls are going to have to, they're going to have to, they're going to need some assistance in in dealing with the fact that AP is at home and they're not. Okay, and I know that's no little thing. All right, but. Um, um, I know, I think I know all of you all well enough to know that y'all can, y'all can handle that and take care of it and address it. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Um, I expect this to work. Mom and dad, remember, every time we're together, I have to tell you all that if at the end of this case, you're not willing and able to provide a safe environment for your children, your parental rights may be further restricted or even terminated permanently. 
Um, so continue working your serv- services, do whatever it takes, whatever it takes to stay in uh, recovery. And if you all, if the two of you, after your best try, believe that you're just too toxic, make that decision, make that decision. Uh, because if, if, if I have to, if I have to remove a child, uh, uh, again, uh, Mr. McCatherine, <laughs> Mr. Crocker, y'all need to file a jury demand. I want, I want to just, I got to get that. Did y'all get that? I, I, did. I, I got a message from, uh, Randy Frazee saying that kids have to be moved by Friday. And I'm, I don't think that that's shocking to anyone, but are we able to accommodate Randy Frazee? Who's Randy Frazee? Oh, Randy, Randy's a former uh, a conservatorship caseworker. I guess she's in a different position okay. now. She's probably maybe watching on YouTube. Um, so I don't know. Maybe Miss Nieto can help us out with with that. Well, that's fine. They can be moved. They can uh, be moved. They can be moved Friday. Uh, that's why I I qualified my order by saying if possible. So if they can stay there for Thanksgiving and go fishing, they can be moved after that. So that's the 24th, right? 23rd, 24th, if possible. But I, I want, I, I think it's in the children in SBNPP's best interest uh, to remain there, have Thanksgiving, go fishing, see the foster grandparents, say their um, thank you very much and we'll, we'll see you later, take care. Um, and so uh, that's, that's fine. Thank you for clarifying, Judge. Just wanted to make sure we got all the logistics taken care of for everybody. Okay, yes. Yeah, thank, <laughs> so thank, they... thank you. Thank you. Ms. Nieto, anything? Ms. Walker, does Ms. Nieto have anything else? Okay. Okay. Listen, I... <laughs> There's never a situation... Hey, guys, I know me and Pam had to discuss next week um, because we have again. a necessary... Say that again. Um, I know that Pam, Miss Walker had an issue with next week on the 28th um, because we have the set. We I know we have an adversary set that day. I think everybody else can go, but it was just kind of logistically to, to figure out what we're going to do since that's the only case on the docket that day. I, I did. I did sit it in person. Um, so if there and I don't know, Miss Walker, if you're going to try to have somebody else there or not, I don't know. But you all just um, let Miss uh, Wallingford know if there's good cause, um, so, um, you know, to appear virtually, otherwise, um, I, I plan on being uh, there in person. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah. And so that as right now, <laughs> that's our only case on the docket. Correct. Okay. All right. So, um, look, I, I know this is very hard and maybe that we even have harder times ahead of us before it gets better. And we hope it does, of course, but I, I want to thank each and every one of you um, just for your blood, sweat, and tears in this case, and and um, we all want the best interest for the children. That's the one thing we can we can agree on. What that looks like, we might be we we might differ, but parents keep working your services. Um, all the court appointments in the department. Thank you very very much. Okay, all right, y'all have a uh, wonderful Thanksgiving. Please take care, and if there's not anything else, we're adjourned. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.